Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before y'all even jump in the comments talking goofy, I get it, I get it, I'm a little late or whatever. I'm gonna have an intro real soon. Don't even worry about that. That's in the works right now. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Help us beat the YouTube algorithm. Make sure y'all subscribing, hitting that bell, sharing, and liking. They try to suppress our videos on knowledge of firearms just in the gun community, period. Hey, baby! Y'all already know what's going on. Y'all know why y'all here. You read the description. You know what's up. Today, we talking budget versus expensive. Yeah, this video right here, this video right here, it's about these two lovely ladies. Coming in first, got the Smith & Wesson SD40, the People's Champ, the Glock 2240, Smith & Wesson. Oh, did you catch that? You had to catch that. I know you caught that. That's right, I said it. A Glock 40 Smith & Wesson. Hey, that's what it's chambered in. It's a cold company. They made everybody say their name. All right, before we get into it, we're gonna talk about the ergonomics of what makes a good budget pistol. You want that thing to run good. You want it to be affordable. And if you gotta carry it every day, you want it to be comfortable. That's the basics to it right there in itself. Oh, can't forget it. Can't forget it. Can't forget it. Can't forget it. Safety is a must also. No accidental drop discharges, no none of that. So it has to be safe, sound, affordable, has to be comfortable. Just think about those things before you buy yours. You can have a whole pistol that you can't shoot because you paid entirely too much for it. Now you can't afford your ammo. Now you just looking goofy. You can go budget and be 20 times as nice as the person that only shoots twice a month. You can shoot every week, two times a week if you're saving money on the back end. So when I was thinking when I got into buying my first firearms, what I actually wanted to tote, what I was packing, I thought reliability, safety, money. But this wasn't my first one. I actually did get a value pistol first, but that's not about this video. You can actually save money on the back end, but here's the kicker. This may not have aftermarket abilities the way that the more well-known expensive versions are. Now, the things that we're gonna break down while we're down here at my workstation, we're gonna talk the ergonomics of the pistol, the safety features, things like that. So first off, let's make sure everything's clear. Everything's clear. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. This one here, already open. Nothing there. So we're gonna set these, see, set these aside. So, we're gonna, we're gonna start off with the less expensive and work our way up. So with this gun here, I mean, matter of fact, let me move this 22 out of the way so we don't get confused. So, all right, now I got y'all where I want y'all. So when we're talking a good budget pistol, we wanna talk about all around functionality, reliability, how it feels in your hand, can it run ammo? Does this thing work? And personally, in my experience, I'll say yeah. And I actually got this for a steal. I actually got mine for around $200. So, let's not just say that, you know, and it, at first I thought it was gonna be a piece, you know, a POS, but when I when I actually got it home, got time to really holster up and, and practice drawing, concealability, for 200 bucks, 14 rounds, beautiful. So let's start talking about some of the features of this here. I'm gonna jump in and dive in from the stippling from 21 Jump Street. So it's not coarse enough to cheese grate your hands on the side here. Can y'all see that? Let me try to bring this in focus for y'all, hold on. 
I miss the focus. See that? So this isn't that coarse, if you can see it. It's not that coarse. It's not cheese grater, not none of that. Now let's talk this back here. Gotta zoom in and get a little definition on that real quick for y'all. You see this here? It's like diamond backs, like how, how snake skin would be presented, if you can see that. Not cheese grady at all. I honestly like the fact that it's not coarse enough to hurt my hand so it won't dig in me. I carry appendix, so if it's digging into my side all day and it has that coarse going on, that's a no bueno for me. No bueno, period. So, and then this doesn't have it, so it kind of accelerates your finger to the stippling job that they have on the side right here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's fits perfectly for my hand. I don't know how it is for everybody else, but this fits perfectly for my hand. Then if you're a lefty, they got it on this side too. I like to put my thumb on that in that in that area there. So say for example I'm down here with it. I can bring my thumb there. See that? Bring my thumb there. No, I'm not gonna not gonna catch my finger on the slide there. But as far as this being like two hundred dollars, like again, I cannot stop saying this is everything that you can do to this pistol is ridiculous. They have companies like Galloway Precision where you can get actual optic mount plates, and this slides right out. Look at this. These look at these rear adjustable sights. That slides right out. No questions asked. Front sights too. See that? So that's it's it's a it's ball game for that. That made it that made it right there. Sight changing. Just like that. Just like that. That's ridiculous. For a two hundred dollar gun. Most guns come with. See. And just in case if you don't know, a lot of guns come with fixed sights that you can't do that with. So whatever it comes with is what it comes with, or you're gonna have to go get that thing milled from a company like NC Engravers, or um, locally we have a few people locally here, I'm not gonna mention their names just yet. We'll wait until we actually get to going somewhere, then we'll start mentioning people's names. The do re me's talk to me. But pretty much, that's another check mark right there. The loaded barrel indicator, look at this, loaded chamber indicator on top there. Another safety. Come on now. They can never say that this, how, many, how, much, how much more safer do they want it? This is a perfect, this is a perfect carry. I'm trying to tell you, this is a perfect carry. Perfect carry, first perfect carry for me. Cause this is definitely the same size as a Glock 19. But we'll get into that in a few. Um, the takedown on this, same as a Glock. Breaks down the same, set that there. Same as a Glock, a little dirty. Do a lot of shooting around here. Can you like? Stay dangerous. Don't ever forget that y'all, stay dangerous. You don't gotta get ready if you're already ready. But, back to work. Breaks down just like a Glock, same spring system. Nothing's too different. Slide, uh, pretty heavy. This, nothing, you already know this means nothing. But the rail system in here is nice. Very nice. I like a company, if I would change the trigger on this, I will probably do an Apex trigger. I like that, Apex Tactical trigger. That company's pretty decent too. They're just like Galloway Precision. They got a lot of aftermarket stuff, so if you guys don't know about them, you should definitely check those people out. Um, I know I'm not allowed to put those type of links in my description. I will figure out a way for me to present those to you all. But don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. We got big bangers coming. Big bangers coming. Now I want y'all to check this out too. This is a big, this is a big deal breaker or maker for me. You see this here? You can manipulate this easy peasy. Easy, look at this. Even if you're even if you're pointing it like this with just your bare thumb on the back, it's gonna go every time. It's big enough, it has a big enough plan field with some nice deep ridges in it. 
So that's gonna get you right every time. No worries, no hesitations. It's gonna get you there. I'm telling you. Uh, as far as reliability, I had a few hiccups when I was first breaking it in. After that, this thing runs smooth. Eat anything I want to throw into it. First Smith and Wesson pistol I ever had, so maybe I'm just biased and I haven't got one that was bad, but really enjoy this. Now we're gonna bring up. From what I'm told in the gun community, in the pew pew community, Glock 22s and Glock 17s, what is it? Uh, no, matter of fact, sorry about that. Glock 19s are the ones to get, I guess, because they're very good at concealability, but I feel it's all on what you wear. That's another story. So let's start going over this. You have your classic Glock sights. Let's see if we can get this in focus here. That for y'all. Classic Glock sights. I know I'm flagging myself, blah, blah, blah. We already know this is clear. So sue me. So sue me. Camera sucks, but. They said get the expensive camera, they said. But, similar Glock sights to everyone. The rear ones here, adjustable. Get your nice little plastic mallet there. And it'll take care of everything. Let me get this in focus for y'all. I don't want to keep messing up this video. So now that I got that back in focus. Similar. Straight push-outs. What more can I say there? It's in their slogan. Glock is perfection. Think about that. And to be technical, it's, it's the reason why a lot of pistols break down like this. We're not going <laughs> to... It's the reason. Again, let me show y'all again. It's a reason why a lot of pistols break down like this. It's a reason why pistols break down like this with the same components just like this. So let's get into the ergonomics of this. As nice thumbs recess, I use this one on this side for my pointer finger. Sit that right in there, it slides right in. On the other side here, one for your thumb. Uh, fits my hand pretty decent, so I don't really care about the stippling on the side here too much This doesn't bother me that it's not as coarse at all. This is rather smooth like I'll rub my nails on here all day the back has a uh, kind of a jagged edge to it Let's try to get try to get that on there So that it's not bad not bad at all Not bad at all, but for my hand, this fits perfectly, so my hand's actually going to the front grooves. I know people with like, you know, mitts, they can't fit this. So for them, this is a this is a little gun for them still too. So this, the weight of this gun is still around 22 ounces unloaded. Loaded, uh, they're saying approximately, I think 34 or something like that, point, point six eight, something crazy number like that with decimals in it. But anywho, we're not here for all of that. Um, we're just going through how this works and how it fits in and bases upon budget. Now, say for example, you buy this here, $700, and you can't afford your ammo. You're going to sit in the house, you're just going to look at it, you're just going to do this all day. You're going to do this all day. And you could actually be getting live practicing. Um, I like the undercut in this gun. We'll go there next. I like the undercut in this gun. Sits pretty high. Sits pretty high. I like it. It's good for my fingers. Doesn't hurt it. Um, what's something else that I like about this? I like the aftermarket for this gun. It's so readily available. You can get 30s, drums, ronies. Everything is readily available. You can go into your local shop and they should have it because Glock is like number one in America. Other than CZ, I believe. Smith & Wesson, more along the lines of revolvers. But, we're gonna talk. Now we're gonna talk the safeties on this. This really doesn't have a safety, except for this right here. See that little thing there? That has to be depressed, that way you can go in and approach the wall. So, this is a very light trigger. 
Reset, switch fingers. Reset, can we get a good angle on that? Right there. See that? Right there. Boom, make it go peel again. So, we're gonna talk cons. Now, um, one thing that I don't like about this gun, which I heard is only an $11 fix, so it's probably not gonna be big for me. Well, matter of fact, a $30 fix because they're both on the same side. I cannot stand this, oh my goodness, look at this slide release. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. I'm not saying I can't work it. Not saying that. I just don't like how I can't really rest my finger on it if I need to. Um, I do not like this stubby mag release, but I heard some of the aftermarkets make your mags fall out. So I kind of got to get used to it. And the reason why I don't like it is because I got to kind of shift my gun to the side to drop a mag. So if I was to actually put in one of these polymer mags here, which I'm not a fan of either. Uh, I'm not a fan of polymer mags. I feel like you got to kind of get those adjusted. Got to keep doing this a lot. Full and, well, unloaded and loaded mags. Got to just keep, keep doing that. See, look, that time it didn't go all the way in. But I got to turn my finger to the side. Got to kind of stray away from, you know, my, my line of fire. <clears throat> but the other one, I can just flip off to the side, boom, get it out. I don't know. But the, but this mag being polymer, I like, but I don't like. I like, but I don't like. It's something about these steel mags. I like the ones made by Metgar. Honestly, those are my favorite ones. Uh, they feel real solid. But, they don't make them for these, so it kind of sucks. But, the polymer ones, I feel like they get chipped up a lot. Um, you can drop this and something can break off on it in your SOL. You're out of a mag, so don't like that. Um, pretty much, that's just me. Now, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, what I want you all to see, up close and personal for yourself. Earlier, I mentioned that the Smith & Wesson is about the size of the actual Glock 19. So, can you get the, the difference in that? How far they sit apart, see that? That's what makes it crazy to me. It's so concealable, at the same time, so powerful. Let's compare these, let's compare these grips. Look at that. One more time with the focus, here we go. Bring them both in. Look at that. Some people, that's not a big deal. It's not a big deal to some people, but to me that is. That digs in my side all day. This one's just a smidge just slimmer. This one's just a little bit fatter. Holds uh, one more, one more. So, I mean, you gotta sacrifice one round for the slimness. I'll take the one round and carry an extra mag. <laughs> all day, all day, all day. Um, weight, they both feel identical in weight. Um, Take down exactly the same, but as far as quality, I'm gonna have to go with this one. I feel like it's made just a just a just a tad bit better, but this one here, range toy, carry that. That's why it has that Technoclip on there. This is my setup for my winter time. Uh, I can add, I'm actually about to convert it for a summertime carry with an actual optic plate from Galloway Precision for this. Uh, don't know what type of sight I put on this. Stay tuned, make sure you subscribe for that. Um, this here, it's more of a work gun for me, but I carry all of my firearms. It's not, I'm very proficient with all of them. Uh, none, I don't love one more than the other. Uh, <laughs> they all have the same amount of love in my heart. And they all got lost in a boating accident. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, but yeah, for this to be the budget pistol, I can definitely say that I like this one more. I like the way it feels in my hand. I like how it feels on my person in a holster and just regular waistband clipping. It conceals very nicely. It doesn't jam into my thigh. It doesn't do anything crazy. That's what makes it awesome to me. This is a little bit more bulky, but the beaver tail on the back, see that? Beaver tail on the back is about the same. 
So I don't want anybody to think I'm talking about beaver tail or anything when that, when that happens. But if you look at the top of the slide on this one here, it's actually rounded in the back. It's rounded. So it doesn't have an edge on it to really poke you. Now we take a look at this one. This one is more box. It has a little round to it, but it's more box than, than the slimmer sleek design of that. Um, I got lucky, honestly, because this hair was brand new and I got this. Nah, I don't even want to say, I don't even want to tell y'all how much I got this one for, man. Just know that it was a very, 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 it was an offer to die for. <laughs> an offer to die for. But more or less, the more that this video is, it's always going to go boom. It's up to you what brand you trust to carry or protect your home with. Just make sure that you're practicing using proper safety and storage habits when doing things. We don't want any accidental discharges or negligent discharge they like to charge you with. No matter how expensive a firearm can be, it's all up to the operator of the machine to operate it the way it's supposed to. But like I said, I love them both. This was just more better to carry. I just like this one better on carry, but this is just a lot more reliable. I wouldn't think twice about this, uh, and it's easy concealable for me. I'm 5'10", 189, 187ish. Yeah, I fluctuate between those two. Not a uh, chubby dude. I'm kind of in between chubby and buff at the same time. So I mean, I can do the handle, handle difference. You can't even see the other handle on this. Look at this. Look at the handle difference. Look at the handle difference. See that? That's what I mean by concealability. That one extra round makes it poke just a little bit more. Can you get that clear? And so, I mean, that's practically what I gotta deal with, but I mean, it's teacher's own. I say quality. Overpriced doesn't always mean it's a bad thing. You can get a cheap pistol that does the same thing that a more expensive pistol does any day. We all know that. But when they match up head to head and it's not too much of a difference, what would you choose? Inspire Urban Tactical. Yo, it's Frank. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hey, share it on other platforms. Urban Tactical is the new wave. Bitches ain't no cuffin' bitches like them other niggas Tough decisions in this rapping business Ain't no being friendly Old niggas turn to enemies Now I'm seeing plenty Strictly business They like dookie trippin' Bitch, I need a middle penny People used to sleep up on me Now I'm seeking vengeance Cold ice and cold heart Bitch, you know we strictly